Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today we'll be talking about volumes in depth. We'll be looking at various different types of volumes and we'll be looking at different uh, criteria that we can use to evaluate types of volumes and the use cases for those different types of volumes as well. So let's jump into it. First of all, we'll do a quick recap on what volumes allow us to do in Kubernetes. If you haven't watched my Kubernetes storage introduction, I would recommend that. Um, but we can quickly recap here. Kubernetes volumes allow us to persist files when the pod restarts or when the container crashes. In general, pods and containers are ephemeral resources that when they go down, they are brought back up at a baseline state. So when a pod is created, there are certain uh, configurations associated with the pod and that is the, the definitive state of the pod that it will continue to have and its container that it contains will have an equivalent baseline state and even if during the execution of the container there might be writes to files within the container file system if that container crashes and comes back up those uh, changes will be overwritten unless we are using volumes volumes in kubernetes also allow us to share files between containers within the same pod so this is uh, useful, as you could imagine, uh, depending on the scenario. We, if we are grouping pods that tightly, they may also require uh, to access the same files. Now, some of the potential requirements we could have when setting up volumes. We may want them to be independent of the pod lifecycle may want them to be available on all nodes. Now, this is not the case for all of the types of volumes that we'll go through, and I'll point out where it is applicable and where it isn't. And we may even want the volume to survive an entire cluster crash. So in this case, um, even if all of the nodes in the cluster went down, we would still be able to recover the data from the volume. And that would, of course, require the creation of resources outside of the cluster. So, and we'll look at where uh, we can provision volumes in this way and where we can't. The first type of volume that we'll look at is empty dir. And as the name suggests, it is used to provision an empty directory. When a pod is removed from a node, the data in empty dir is deleted permanently. So this type of volume is specific to create. So this type of volume essentially creates an empty directory on the node that the pod is deployed to and when the pod is removed or deleted from that node then the empty dir contents are also deleted so it's not the uh, most long lasting uh, method of setting up volumes um, it may be enough in certain scenarios however uh, it certainly won't meet the case of requiring persistence beyond a full cluster crash because the data is obviously going to be stored within a node and even if the pod is evicted from that node the empty dir will be deleted and the empty dir uh, storage is stored on whatever medium that backs the node so uh, maybe an ssd it may be a hard disk or some uh, network file system and if we look at the pod spec where we have defined the empty dir we can see that generally we'll define a size limit for the empty directory in this case 500 megs and then when we want to mount the uh, pod to a container under the container specification here we have this volume mounts field and that specifies where within the container the volume is going to be mounted. It's going to be under slash cache and the name of the volume that we are referring to. So it's cache volume and you can see under volumes the same, we have the same name. The next type of volume is host path. This mounts a file or directory from the host nodes file system. So once again we are using the node on which the pod is defined in order to uh, provision our storage. So there are a few different types that we can look at. There is directory 
and directory or create, which means we either define a new directory if a, the directory that we've specified does not exist, or if the directory does exist, then we will just use the directory. And then directory, the directory type, as we can see here, requires the directory to already exist. Similarly, we have file and file or create. File requires a file to exist. File or create creates a file if it doesn't exist. Then we have socket, car device, and block device as our additional types. It is worth noting that there are a number of security vulnerabilities associated with the host path volume type. And when we are defining a host path a volume, it must be set to read only, or at least that's the strong recommendation from Kubernetes. The next volume type we will look at is config map. It allows us to inject configuration data into pods. We can select specific entry in the config map to use. So a config map may have uh, various sections and we can select from individual sections in the config map. So in the example that we're using here, we can see uh, the volume is defined, the name is config vol. We have selected the config map type with the name of the config map that we're referencing. So this would require there to be a config map named log config existing within our Kubernetes cluster. A config map, a config map is a Kubernetes API object. So that's what we are referring to here. And under items, you can see the key is log level. Within our config map, there will be a key named log level with some data under it. That is the data that we are selecting. The data will then be written to this log level path. And we can see in our volume mount, we have defined the container path to be etc config which will then be appended by this log level. So with all that put together, the contents will be written to etsy config log level. Now this uh, is in fact node independent because it is a Kubernetes API object that we are uh, referencing. So the actual data that we're talking about is stored in etcd, it's not stored on any particular node. Depending on how we have set up our etcd backend, it may survive a cluster crash, assuming we can uh, recover etcd. Um, so this method potentially will satisfy all of our criteria that we mentioned at the beginning. The next type is the downward API type, and this allows us to expose container and pod fields to code within containers. So essentially what we're doing here is we're referencing other fields within our pod or container manifest. So if we look at our volume here, the name is pod info, then we have selected the downward API volume type, the items, first path is labels, second path is annotations, and then the field ref is metadata.labels and metadata.annotations. So what does that really mean? That means that we are referring to metadata.labels and metadata.annotations here. So all of these labels and all of these annotations will be mounted into our container via this path, Etsy pod info. The next type of volume is the local volume. This type of volume is mounted local storage, such as disk, partition or directory. It is similar to host path. However, we use node affinity in order to define the node that we want the pod to be deployed to. So with host path, there is a directory on a node that was mounted to the container. The same thing applies here. However, instead of allowing our pod to move to another node and then reference the same host path that will contain completely different data or no data. In this case, 
we set up affinity rules so that the pod will only be, be deployed to particular nodes or a single node that contains the data that we need to set up the container. It is used as a statically created persistent volume. And as you can see here, this is what we've actually defined here. This isn't a pod definition. Um, this persistent volume will be created uh, using the, the local type. Then we will have a persistent volume claim, and then that persistent volume claim will be referenced within the pod. Although this does solve one of our problems with the host path type, we are still dependent on the availability of the underlying node. If the node goes down as it, and is unrecoverable, we will lose the data that we have defined within our local volume. Another type of volume is secret. This is used to pass sensitive information to pods. Again, like in FigMap, it references existing secret objects from the Kubernetes API. It is backed by tempfs, which is a RAM-backed file system. So this data is never actually written to disk. It is written to RAM, uh, which I guess is a security measure. Next, we have projected volumes. These are used to combine various volume types into the same directory within the container. So the supported types we can use in projected volumes are secret, download API, service count token, and config map. So these are all uh, Kubernetes API objects that can be used within projected volumes. As you can see here, we've defined secret volume, download API volume, config map volume, and then those will all be mapped into the same directory. So that is our video on the different types of Kubernetes volumes. I hope that was useful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video.